Hey, thank you to our sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. Listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash stanhope. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash stanhope. Big shout out to Helix Sleep. Take the two-minute sleep quiz and they'll match you to a mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Find your perfect mattress at helixsleep.com slash stanhope. You're listening to the Doug Stanhope Podcast. All right. We going? We are rolling. Live from the San Jose Improv Green Room pre-show uh, with Paul Kimball, who, uh, if you caught the last special, Dying of a Last Breed, uh, that was my closing bit, was about his, uh, uh, what's that word? Late wife? Late wife, yeah. Took me a while to come up with that word, too, when it happened. Yeah. Yeah, I was always weird with uh, um, uh, Shawcroft was yeah. saying that's uh, it's Hedberg's ex-wife. You know, not ex. It's not ex-wife. It's yeah. former wife now. Yeah, yeah it, it was a piece of language that I kind of wrestled with. Like, uh, it felt real weird because it's not like we ever stopped being married until she stopped being alive. Yeah, that's going to be odd. Yeah. Um, yeah, the the, uh, the special is actually coming out. So this is fortuitously timed that we're here and you're here. I said, I thought we had you on the podcast and uh, Chaley thought so too. And we don't know how that didn't happen. But uh, yeah, the special is, uh, as we promised years ago, <laughs> I said, eventually you, you buy it now or eventually it's coming out for free and it's coming out for free, I think two weeks or so or soon uh, on all things comedy so uh yeah it worked out nice. tell me where you're at what you're doing so where we're at here and i just did you said you were in san jose. san jose san jose oh green room yeah i did all that right in front of you that's great bailey he's uh he's going to set up merch and do things and we have uh, quesadillas and pretzels coming so it'll be a little chaotic but uh if you haven't heard the, the story or your late wife was a huge comedy fan. Totally. Were you, were you both big yeah. comedy fans? Yeah, it, but uh, I worked. What about it? She had the ability to uh, not have to get up super early. Oh, so she went out to more shows than me. <laughs> you got this is how it's, This is how it's recording this onto my thing here. <laughs> what? It was it's recording through your phone. The, the, it's uploading through this because I can't find the Wi Fi here. Oh. And I walk down the hall, go, I'll take a picture of the, of the theater. Yeah, that would have so knocked we just you guys off. Over? No, no, you get, you guys should be good. All right, um, but you can't take your phone with you. I can't take my phone with me. Yeah. So all right, well, no one calls yeah. you except for me, yeah. and I'll let you know if That's I need it. anything. I don't shut that all the way. It's locked. So yeah. it's gonna... All right, this is a clusterfuck from the beginning. Yeah. All right, so so Laura, I don't remember the first time I met her. I know she was at the green room. Like she was yeah. really well, she was, in comedy. She was a hardcore fan of yours in particular. But she was a hardcore comedy fan. Yeah. Full stop. Yeah, she was everywhere. Uh, and I can tell you when she first saw you. Tell me. Was at the Satiristas show up in the Throckmorton Theater. Oh, wow. Marin. I was just thinking about that. Because she came home from that show. I couldn't go. I was staying home with the kids. And uh, she came back from this like, Stanhope's going to be your new favorite comedian. We got to go see him together. So, like, it was that. And she was right. That was a mixed bill with that. And the, the, this is Marin County. Yeah. Uh, so it's like high dollar, like very high dollar. Mort Saul was on the bill. That's right. Um, <laughs> the, 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 the guy that, the, not the shitbag Lars, but the other guy from Metallica was in the audience. Oh, Kirk Hammett was yeah. there. Yeah. And I always swore if fucking Lars from Metallica was ever at one of my shows, I'd have him fucking removed. For all that shit they did with Napster, that I respect fucked that. me. Yeah, uh, and uh, yeah, I remember, I, I remember opening with, "Hey, you guys are out on a Sunday night. Don't you don't you have people that have to get up and work for you tomorrow morning?" <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> I can imagine you making a lot of assholes tighten at that point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then I started shitting on fucking Metallica, and it was awkward. And uh, Mort Saul evidently was, as his handlers were walking him out, <laughs> someone overheard him say, I know they have the right to, but I like to <laughs> say whatever bits I was doing. Dude, that's a, that's a badge of honor if there was one. So that was the first time. That's Yeah, that's the first time. And uh, But it was, I it was only I'm months better. later that we saw you up at, uh, what was it? Was it the rickshaw stop in the city or something? Yeah. Was it the rickshaw? Yeah. yeah. Punk rock standing. Super great. One of the most fun live comedy experiences ever. Seeing you for the first time in a, in a standing room only punk rock nightclub. It was a uh, freaking great, great show. Great night. When that bingo that night. And I, um, yeah, it was just a super fun. fun I mean, we've been seeing you ever since. Being at the comedy store in LA, and uh, we had some tragic shows there, like like drunkenness, yeah. levels of cocaine and drunkenness. That I remember, we had our merch set up. And we, it was me and Junior, and and I had my merch set up, and uh, I remember just. <laughs> crawling under the table because I didn't want to deal with selling merch. I was fucking hammered. I remember laying under the table, hiding from people. And then all of a sudden, someone's selling my merch. And I look up and it's Laura Kimball's taking over the merch yep. booth, just taking money. She was a, a jump in and help kind of person. Like totally, if this, she saw somebody that she liked who needed help, she was already working on it before they had a chance <laughs> to ask her. It was a really, really cool aspect of her personality. Yeah, yeah, she was a uh, she was a sweetheart. And that the story is that uh, she had well, I know it's, it it spread to her brain. Yeah, it was she had melanoma? Melanoma, and uh, it it didn't take very long for her to get really sick. Uh, it was you know about three shit uh, thirteen February of thirteen she was diagnosed and she was gone by June of twenty fifteen. Damn, it sucked. It was really really rough. For her. But, yeah, and uh, yeah. and she she it always made me fucking crazy that she would come to multiple shows. <laughs> and everybody that knows me knows how much that gets in my head if they're say, seeing the same act. And she knew how much it fucked with you, and it gave her such pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so once she got diagnosed, well, now I can't really give her shit anymore for coming to all these shows. Night after night, seemingly. Yeah, what are you going to do? Deny her her last gig? <laughs> Always sitting, you know, second row center. Yeah. The yeah. Laura Kimball seat. <laughs> Fur to it. And, uh, but she loved the way you teased her, man. I mean, you, you, I think that was the, when you, right after she was diagnosed, and it was a really, really intense moment for us as a family, and you and your friends called her and mocked her and like, eh, you have cancer. <laughs> it was hilarious because it was so inappropriate and so fucking beautiful and necessary. necessary. And it let so much air out of the tension of that moment. And it made her feel seen and, and like, okay, I'm still me. I can still laugh, you know? And so that's why she made so much effort to continue seeing you as much as she did. I mean, she and Renee took a fucking train down the coast oh, to I see you because she her. couldn't fly. Well, she had the, the cancer in her brain. You can't fly in an airplane. Your, your brain is swollen inside of your skull. It's dangerous. Renee French? Yeah, Renee French. Yeah. She came wow. down. I fucking do have a memory. Yeah, look at that. Just a couple, couple cells still fired. <laughs> so they took the train down together to L.A. to see you. That's when they did the podcast. Mm. That's why I thought you were on the podcast. She mm-hmm. was on the podcast. Yeah, Renee was down there instead. Yeah. Again, I'm, you know, I took care of the kids. I did a lot of kind of the, the back office work during the time when Laura was sick, but. Well, you did well, you know. And, uh, yeah, laughter is the best medicine. And, uh, I, unfortunately, I failed her. She's dead. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> you suck. <laughs> uh, but I, I remember, I mean, you've seen some really fucked up shows, especially here. Yeah. Usually here. Yeah. Well, first of all, I fucking hate this room. I, I, I'm not a fan of the improv, but whatever. It's the thing that San Jose has. So I come to shows here, come to see you here for sure. But it's a big corporate kind of thing and whatever. Yeah, we were just talking before this started about alternative rooms and, and what a crapshoot it is. Yeah. 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 It's never a crapshoot here. 
you know exactly what you're yeah, going to get. So there is a comfort. There's a comfort working the improvs. You know everything's going to be set up. They let me podcast. It, it's going to I mean, yeah, exactly for you. It's probably Smoke like cigarettes. predictable in all the right ways. Mm-hmm. For as an audience member, not so much. But anyways, you again when we came here to see you a few years back and you uh, performed a silent tribute to Laura at the end of your act by just basically saying, you know, my friend's dying of cancer and I'm going to die up on stage in her honor. And then just sat there, stood there on stage and letting the the room just get painfully uncomfortable while everyone oh. tried to figure out wh- whether it was the right moment to leave the room or not. <laughs> and that was really one of the coolest uh, tributes anyone could have ever hoped to have because it, she eventually came up on stage and, and put her arms around you and gave you a way of leaving the stage. It was, uh, it was really cool, man. It was really cool you did that. I remember that. Uh, so uh, what was her in with uh, the green room in Provenza and all that? Started exactly in the same spot at the Throckmorton on that Satirita, Satirita show. Like she met um, Provenza that night too, because that was his book, right? Yeah. And so... She made friends with a bunch of comics during that whole period of time up at the Throckmorton. And so we went to lots of different shows together to check out things. She went on a lot by herself. But when the when Provenza started doing the green room, she was like, I'm going. I'm like, yeah, go. Have fun. You know? who, who did she hate? Who the comic comedians did she yeah, hate? This is a, this is a, a green uh, room question because oh, we are right. in the green room. Oh, and we always ask our server, what's the worst comedian you've ever had, like diva-wise? There was a douchebag to you know. Rob Schneider. Really? She fucking hated that guy. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think of who else, but I, he comes to mind for sure. Did you ever walk out of a show? I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, I've seen some shitty comedians, and generally speaking, they're not the headliners that I've come to see. Um, I've I've seen mediocre headliners, but never walked out because someone was. No, you, you, uh, Paul Kimball fronts a band. Uh, I have his album right here. It's called Wax. Uh, it's Wax Moon is the band. Yep. And the new album is Hello Morning. Hello Morning. And you've been with that band for a while because I remember. Yeah. Yeah. She gave me a, a disc a long time ago. I think the disc she gave you was from my previous band. I was in a, okay. a kind of country rock band called Careless Hearts. And this is uh, an acoustic folk thing that me and one other guy do, singing close harmony, and it's very different. But it's it's good, good late night, you know, morning music or late night quiet zone stuff. Because so. uh, uh, usually people are who are that big of comedy fans are secretly yeah. want to do comedy. Oh man, well, I didn't know if that was the case with you, but. Uh, well, if, if I felt I could not laugh at my own jokes, I would love to have some kind of, I would love to incorporate comedy into the things I do, but I can't, I, I, I cannot keep a straight face. I laugh real easy. So yeah, I stay out of that business. Uh, oh yeah. Please hold. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Stress shows up in all kinds of ways, and in a world that's telling you to do more, sleep less, and grind all the time, here's your reminder to take care of yourself, do less, and maybe try some therapy. Have you ever found yourself so depressed that you really have to convince yourself that Cobra Kai is interesting and you need to watch all nine episodes today? I know the feeling. And when I get that feeling, I go to BetterHelp.com. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, so give it a try and see if online therapy can reduce your stress. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and Doug Stano Podcast listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash Stanhope. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash Stanhope. I hope. I'm, 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 now I'm sounding like an interviewer. We, we went out for lunch and I said, oh shit, you've never been on the podcast? Well, we're, we're doing one anyway. Let's have you on. And then it immediately killed all conversation. Yeah, now we're like, we can't talk about shit. Yeah. Save it for the podcast. Now I'm asking. Now, the, now the pressure's on. Yeah. Now, now I should have written shit down, Tracy. <laughs> Are you 
hanging out. All right, get behind the bar. Get in your place, okay, woman. Get in my place, get in my place. Cheers. Cheers. I'm not eating. Thank you. I'm trying not to clump on that. I, uh, so, so, uh, we were talking about getting back into performing. Yeah. You put this album out. So the title is what? Give them your details where they yeah, can uh, find stuff. Sure. So, uh, the band is Wax Moon. The record is Hello Morning. It's a LP that we put out in, uh, April of last year. And, you know, we recorded it in the, I don't know, year and a half right before the pandemic. We just finished recording in February of 2020. And we're about to head into the studio to start mixing it when everything shut down. And um, so, we, you know, all the studios have became like one person capacity rooms. And so that left us out. And uh, so we put it on the shelf for a little while. And then uh, my partner, John, he he's a recording engineer. So he was able to get into some studios and do some mixing on his own. And over the months, we got it done. And then it's like, OK, you know, late, I guess last last spring. We're like, looking like things are opening up. Maybe let's put this record out and start putting our shows back together. And we've started to gear up for, you know, playing gigs and everything. And then slam, Delta closed the door. And so we just, uh, I'm sure you know this very well. We just like lost all momentum again and then had to start again and building it back up again now. And we played uh, one show, we got a little company up a couple weeks. And we're just starting to get it back together, finally. Now, what type of venues do you play for a, a folk duo? Well, so that's one of the coolest things about this particular group is that there's really no venue we can't play. It, you know, we can play a room like this with 12 people in it and no amplification <laughs> whatsoever. And we can kill in a tiny little space. We can play on stage. I really thought like a Cafe Roca. Mm -hmm. Bisbee, Definitely. the bistro where yeah, we play a lot of house concerts where we actually you know play at people's homes and we can you know that shit is so fun. That's like some of the most fun because it's super intimate and people are really surprised to hear like something that's actually good in someone's backyard. Did you do any of that during the pandemic? No, no. Well, we in the one little window last summer when it looked like everything was going to open up, we had a party in our backyard and we had like four different performers and we we performed. And it was all outdoors and it was super, super great. And it just whetted everybody's appetite for more. And then, <laughs> and then again, bam, bam. yeah, that, that makes me really miss parties we used to have. <laughs> yeah, the compound. Yeah. yeah. Having live music and comics. Mm -hmm. Right. So that, that's, I mean, I'm desperate for more of that shit. You know, to, and not just to do it, but to feel like the joy of it. The, yeah. Like everyone being together and relaxed mm -hmm. and sharing in these moments of like, Hey, you're fucking hilarious. Hey, you guys are great. Hey, this is, I've never seen her before. She's tremendous. Like the, all of the spontaneity that yeah. happens in those kind of moments. Ah, it's been so long. Yeah. Now it's making me want to plan another <laughs> farts <laughs> fest. Yeah. Uh, Cause we've had like uh, blackguards on the podcast and I've been on uh, 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 Raylan Nelson. Oh yeah. Willie Nelson's granddaughter. Oh yeah. She's a performer too. Yeah. yeah. Jesus Christ, the Nelson family just never ends, does it? Yep. <laughs> but I just every time I, I talk to these people, I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, we have to do a party now. Maybe we have to. All right. Well, let me know, man. We got cars. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cars? What are you afraid to get on planes? No, I'll get. I get on a plane. We got. We have gotten on a couple of planes. We've done some travel as a as a family. Have you done much other than the work that you're doing now? Like. Yeah, I did, I, I, I did a road trip first. I drove around like, mostly Nevada, Utah, just back roads for like 10 days or 15 days or something. And then I flew to Dr Gibraltar for no reason. Oh, that's right. Because it sounded you like did? a weird place to go. It is a weird place to go. What's yeah. Gibraltar like? It's two and a half miles uh, of rock, <laughs> bottom, of, <laughs> bottom of Spain, overlooking Africa. And, uh, I just mostly sat around and drank at a hotel bar. It sounds interesting, though. <laughs> yeah, we were just talking about, I want to go to Tahiti, but... Oh, man. That was one of the things that happened to us is that... So, uh, my wife, she was studying for the bar, and... Your new wife? Yes. Oh, let's catch everyone. Yeah, sorry. Laura, sorry. Laura, Laura, Laura Kibble. Laura passed away in 2015, and then uh, a couple years later, I met Trisha, and uh, she is... An amazing person. I'm super fucking lucky to have met later in my life. Let, let's get to the in between. Yeah. What do you mean? The in between? In between Laura and Trisha. 
Uh, dalliances? The less said, the better. But yeah, uh, it was. It was See, a, I did. I, I said, <laughs> what, "What can we talk about at lunch that you can't talk I, about?" I, on I hadn't air. thought about that question. What was the, What was your first intimate time after Laura passed that you go, "Oh, can I do this? Can I go through with this?" Yeah, uh, it was. It was someone I had been with in the past, in the distant past, and uh, it was. Uh, it was a really surreal experience. More than anything else, it was like uh, this is was great on one level because it was somebody new. I'd been with Laura for a long time, but uh, at the same time, it was really weird. And it definitely, I don't think I was quite ready. What, what, what was, it wasn't it like a sympathy situation, was it? Uh, I don't honestly know. Like there was, there was a lot left unsaid in that situation, but it was, a, it was a, you know, I got the feeling of someone throwing me like a life ring. Like maybe it was a sympathy thing. Maybe. Maybe not. But I mean, was but it one of those way. conversations where it's like, hey, you're in a really hard place and I just want to be here for you? No, no, it wasn't like that. that. <laughs> it wasn't like that, but it was uh, it was casual, I'll say that. And it was uh, it was something that I was grateful for at the time, but it also took me, I, I, I knew after the fact. Was it, it more wasn't... awkward before or after? After. Yeah. Yeah, after. Like right. immediately after. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. Oh, I got to go. Yeah, it was it was like that, and <laughs> and I dated for a little while after that too, and uh, um, and again I just wasn't quite ready. I had realized, you know, my kids and I were all going through a lot, and uh, you know, yeah. How old were they when she died? Uh, so Milo was fifteen, and Frida, who now goes by Reed, is uh, she was thirteen. So they were yeah. young. This was just a really tough time for these kids, and um, and they're. Dad, me, I'm spinning out too. Like I'm, you know, it took us all a minute to to get our feet underneath. Yeah, she was she was young. Was she 45, 44, 48, 48? Yeah, but really young. Yeah. She looked fantastic. Yeah, I mean, before the cancer really, <laughs> the came cancer out. fucked her up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it did, but uh, she, yeah, it was it was a, a really strange few years. What? I mean, how how were the kids? Were they? Did they want you to date? No, name. no. I mean, I, I was, I kept it very private because right. I don't think, I knew my kids weren't ready. And uh, then I, when I did start dating, it was difficult for them. All right. And what about with Trish, the new wife? No, it, it, by that time it was less so. All right. um, I think, you know, I, I, my son still struggled with it. I think longer than my daughter. I think my so daughter. now? No, not, not anymore. No, I mean, I think he's, he's in the process of, of really accepting that She's my wife and, and she's so fucking cool and she's nothing but like open hearted with him and really wants to connect with both my kids. And so I, I trust that over time it's all going to be great, but, um, you know, it's just an awful. She doesn't make them call her mother. <laughs> <laughs> no, she has a really light touch and I think that's super appropriate and, um, and she's cool as shit. And so eventually, you know, my daughter came around pretty fast. How did you meet? Uh, Bumble. Dating oh, no. app, yeah, yeah. I was guessing it wasn't a gig. No, it was not a gig. <laughs> Most musicians I was guessing it was. shows, but not a folk duet. <laughs> yeah, there's not a lot of panties flung in the Wax Moon <laughs> show. <I'm telling> you. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Now that we've launched your career, uh-huh. yep. <laughs> in the stardom, go- was Paul Kimball. From the one appearance on the Doug Stano podcast and the new Carson. <laughs> Man, if I'd only known, I would have tried to get on this podcast so much longer ago. <laughs> do, do you, uh, uh, do you, uh, I was going to say, uh, oh, does your wife come to your shows? Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, she totally, totally likes our band. Because if she didn't, if you said no, I was going to say, let's not play this album. <laughs> yeah. No, she's, she digs it and she hears it a lot. So that's uh, like Andy's wife. Fucking, I've, Known him 25 years, never once did his wife ever come to a show. Any shows, yeah. Yeah. And he's brilliant. Yeah. And he's brilliant. Yeah. I, I, I always think, what kind of. Does he want her there? No. Probably not. Now. So that's the thing. Like, there's a part of it <laughs> Maybe that is at some point. the arrangement between the two of them has something to do with it for sure. Yeah. I mean, now they, they have a, whatever their relationship is. Yeah. Yeah, you pretty, would, pretty you'd be creeped out if she did show up. Yeah, I think you would. Uh oh, there's trouble. <laughs> Andy, get off stage, your wife's here. <laughs> Go out the fire exit. I don't know what's going on. Should I call the cops? <laughs> <laughs> Do you sell merch after shows? Oh yeah. Does your wife sell merch? 
Uh, I don't think she ever has. But Laura would have sold merch. <laughs> I, just, I, know, I know Trish is going to be listening to this, so I just want to start trouble. <laughs> That's why I'm That's drinking funny. water. That's funny. <laughs> I know if I turn this into a cocktail, it's going to uh-huh. slowly... Actually, you know what? Since you're here, Tracy, why don't you pour me a, a gentle one? So, so in the bit, there, I, I I do stretch the truth in that bit. Yeah, I did. I did have your number in my phone. Yeah. So uh, I'm sure that part was true. You were probably dreading my call. Yeah. Yeah. No. I, yeah. I, and that was what the that closing bit on the last special is yeah. about. If you haven't heard the bit, is the fact that I, I've known her for so long and seen her at so many places, and we've become friendly. And I've met you uh, at shows. Uh, but I, I said, how am I going to know when you're dead? Because we don't have any mutual friends. And uh, she said, well, I'm going to give you Paul's number and he'll call you. And uh, so I had your number, yeah. just hoping it wouldn't ring. Right, right. And I remember, sure. I think I was, I was working on my first book then. Uh, shit. You know, I got a scrap. Yeah. Uh, and I was, and I was over at the quiet house. Thank you. Where's that whiskey? That whiskey's yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. it's in okay. the bag. It's illegal whiskey. Are you it's just doing a couple cubes? What no big. Or go home. I don't know why the fuck we ordered food right before we started this. Now it's, it's going to sit there and get yeah. cold. But it'll still be better than that fucking Mexican food we had. Uh, so the phone goes off. I, re- I remember I was writing and uh, I think you... I think I texted you. Okay. Whatever it was. I, I, I know it, it took yeah. me a minute to figure out what to say. Yeah, thank you. And I thought of saying yeah. what the bit I say in the bit. Yeah. And I told so I, I, I didn't actually say that. Well, I told you that I wasn't gonna say that. Yeah, then that was the early what I wanted to say was blank and then uh yeah. Which totally made me laugh. And it was and I was like I you know I'm gonna just pretend that you did and you're like good because that's what I'm gonna say in the bit. <laughs> Yeah, there's so much of comedy that is shit you actually thought of as you walked away from a situation going, fuck, I should have said that. But I'm going to say it like that on stage. Um, so much of my adolescence that was true, though. Missed yeah. the feeling like I couldn't fucking get words out in time. Yeah. But is you it go that, back. French, that French saying, it's like the, the thoughts on the stairs or something like that. As you're walking up the stairs oh. after you had an encounter and you think about exactly what you were going to say. Of course, the French so have a term said, for that. Yeah. That's a cool it's like schadenfreude. Of course, the term is that's a great word. Do you know the French word for this expression? I, know, I, I wish. I want to hear it. She'll Google it. He'll sleep. Two minutes later, you're asleep. When I can't sing, they can't sue me for a, a violation of... Uh, yeah, he'll sleep. Sleep is the best drug that I'm waiting for sleep to actually be penalized by the federal government because the best drug in the world is lucid dreaming, sleeping, and waking up strong and fresh. And fuck the outside world. Sleep is the best drug, and Helix Sleep provides the best sleep. It's like the breaking bad of mattresses. Yeah, you get that fucking hard ice kind of combination. You have no idea. Everybody's unique and Helix knows that. So they have several different mattress models to choose from. They have soft, medium, firm. Mattress is great for cooling you down if you sleep hot. And even a Helix Plus mattress for plus size, folks. Helix Sleep has a quiz that takes just two minutes to complete and matches your body type and sleep preferences to the mattress perfect for you. I took the Helix quiz and I was matched with the Helix Sunset because I wanted something that felt soft. I slept on my side and I felt the Helix dragging itself into me. I felt, oh. I don't need a cat or a dog or a partner. I just need Helix. So if you're looking for a mattress, you take the quiz, you order the mattress that you're matched to, and that mattress comes right to your door, shipped for free. You don't even need to go to the mattress store ever again. 
Who goes to a mattress store? Just go to helixsleep.com slash stanhope. Take their two-minute sleep quiz, and they'll match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. They have a 10-year warranty, and you get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. They'll even pick it up if you don't love it, but you will. Helix is awesome, but you don't need to take my word for it. Helix was awarded the number one best overall mattress pick of 2020 by GQ and Wired Magazine. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Find your perfect mattress at helixsleep.com slash stanhope. Well, we've hung out a few times uh, since Laura passed away. Uh, we've made or, uh, original Joe's our, our go-to. Yeah, it was, we were, uh, this uh, podcast was going to be sponsored by original Joe's without their knowledge or consent because it is maybe my favorite restaurant ever. Uh, it's old, what, it's like 1940s? It's, it's got a serious 50s vibe for sure. Yeah, I, I think even 40s. I, I think it's older now, but I think they last remodeled it in the 50s. It's, a, and I think it's like an original bartender. The bartender's been there for fucking 75 years. Well, it's 115 years old. Yeah. There's, Every, it's got the old, you know, red, you know, vinyl. Red and, vinyl everywhere. Dark, dark smoke filled rooms that you can still, even though no one smokes in there, it still it's feels still like smoke. It. Yeah. yeah. And they, they do perfect, you know, old timey cocktails and old fashions and, Whiskey sours proper yep. and the best fucking spaghetti and meatballs and everybody goes there. Everybody you know? goes there. Oh, is that the regular Joe's that you're talking mm-hmm. about? Yeah. yeah. Original Joe's. Original. And we were so excited to fucking hook up and have lunch there again. And uh, they're fucking closed on Sunday. So fuck original Joe's. Yeah. We're on to some other Joe's at this point. <laughs> Eating other Joe's. Yeah, I'm, I was uh, bummed my son couldn't get down quick enough on the, on the BART train because uh, he's now old enough to drink. And I'm like, oh shit, you gotta meet us down there. Well, he's coming tomorrow night. Yeah, Santa he's coming Cruz. Up tomorrow night. Yeah. And uh, I remember that show. Was that the last time I saw Laura? Uh, no, that was before the run of shows in LA when you did the podcast. Because okay. that's probably why Jelly was thinking I was on the podcast because we were going to do it together that night in Felton. But for whatever reason, things didn't work out. And you were like, we'll just do it another time. And you guys Everything didn't work out at that yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. I remember it was like like a co-op of some kind. Yeah. And I remember some old docent that was watching the oh back God, door I when I was out that. in the back parking lot smoking. And he told me to smoke even further away <laughs> because it was blowing in. Well, it was, it was, a, it was a Mexican <laughs> restaurant, too. Yeah. And then, the, yeah, and I don't know which was the stronger of the two, whether it was the kind of DIY punk rock stage or the Mexican restaurant uh, seven miles from downtown <laughs> Santa Cruz. Did you guys but, think you were going to Santa Cruz when you got there? We were in Santa Cruz That's until we had to do the show. So and funny. we went out to basically the Redwoods. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. It's crazy. And then we no, and then we had didn't we have Andy with us? Yeah. Because yeah, Andy had that weird guy that so was supposedly molested by the same guy that molested oh, me. Oh yeah, that guy was there. Yeah, and and his dad or something. No, and no, that, that was my uh, stepbrother and uh, and my birth mom's. Oh, okay. husband. They were also there. They were also there. Andy was, was there with that wow. guy, and yeah. that went weird and sideways. I hadn't seen them in years, and then they come into the carnival with that guy spilling a story with the other wow. Andy story, and it's like, wow, your friends are great. <laughs> Yeah, that guy, that guy buttonholed me in the green room and told me his life story. And he's, and he's a co, what, I don't know what it was called. Co victim. Well, we would have played it, except that uh, he refused to release the, uh, the okay. After he that dude? told his story, he said, uh, yeah, don't, don't release oh, that. Well, that sucks. So, yeah, that's back when we used to give people out. Yeah. Like, hey, if you wake up, what, what did we call it? Yeah, like, regret, uh, morning regret or something, something like that. Yeah. yeah. It's it, been a while. That doesn't happen anymore. Now. We, we make shit up now. <laughs> I, I, in post production, I add shit. <laughs> uh, I, I remember like giving that guy like loads of shit from the stage. The guy that told me I couldn't smoke. Like, yeah, you did, you did a solid five minutes on that guy, and it was <laughs> hilarious. It was really fucking funny. You were pacing the stage. You were so pissed off, and it was really funny. <laughs> 
I have no idea what I said, but I yeah. was. I don't think I recorded back in those days, or if I did, it's, it's a couple, couple five hard drives ago. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't yeah. know if we they even had soundboards in some of those gigs. In that room, probably not. You're all running, running all the all the amplif- amplification through like a single guitar amp or something. <laughs> I know we found a bar afterwards. I don't know if you were with us. No, we split after the show. Okay. We, we hung out in the green room for a while and took off. Yeah, there's a bar in the office. It was like a cop bar you could smoke in. Who's going to bust you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Eight miles from the venue, uh-huh. though. Yeah. <laughs> we had to get, we're back down in Santa get, Cruz, right? Yeah, yeah. We had to get out of the Angeles National Forest. <laughs> were you there the last time I did Santa Cruz? Because I played in Santa Cruz proper with Morgan Murphy and Brett Erickson. Oh, you played with Morgan? That's awesome. Um, no, that was, uh, yeah, it's weird that that was, this wasn't on the tour. Mm-hmm. That was, uh, that was so that was, uh, that was five years ago. That's yeah. Like 2016. That was the Ventura one you were talking about, right? You know, sure. No, after yeah. that? No, we, we came up this way. So we went, Oh, okay. I don't know where we started. Uh, this was Johnny Depp showed up at the Star oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. tour show. And it was like, <laughs> we got third sold. <laughs> just fucking just absolute tumbleweeds, <laughs> which is fine because uh, I was just starting out. Oh, that's why I was hosting. That's what I was doing. Oh, the was, Friends. Yeah, I was doing Doug Stan Open Friends where I, I'd, I'd go up and do 15, 20, and then you might want to check yeah, that. That might be our next yeah, podcast guest. Where is it? Uh, it's in my back somewhere. <laughs> Don't worry. We're not in a hurry. Uh, yeah, I was, I'd go up and host and then bring up Erickson and then go back up and do another 15 in between them, then bring her up and then close with it. Uh, no, I, the only time I've seen you other than in San Jose or San Francisco was that one time up in Felton. Uh, I think I've seen you here shit, four, three, four times in San Francisco, probably four, four times. I mean, I've seen a lot of, a lot of your performances. I'm always happy to see you. <laughs> Seriously. I'm, there's, you know, the, the 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 blow and smoke up your ass section of the podcast, but I know there's very few comedians who I can watch over time. Like I will enjoy people for a bit, and then generally speaking, they run the same laps again and again, and I'm kind of done after a while. <laughs> um, Chappelle changes all the time, and you change all the time. I like both both of y'all a lot. I never get tired of either. I, yeah, I guess your act grows with you, but uh, yeah. How old are you now? 54. I'll be 54 in June. All right. I'm a, um, you're a youngster. I'm rounding up still. Yeah, I'll be 55 in a couple weeks. And, uh, you know, I, just I, used to, I used to be like you back when I was young. <laughs> hey, lady. Uh, make yourself at home. We're just podcasting. And stuff. Nice. Since you were going to be late, I had a jam and a different guest early. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, and you're, you're, uh, uh, what, were you, what did you do last night? Last night we went and saw the Sharks play. Um, oh. Friends of mine uh, have a an arts collective in San Jose. Shout out to Local Color to do lots of really cool shit in San Jose. And uh, one of the things they did was a an event with the Sharks where they had a bunch of different artists paint these little shark heads in different ways and uh, auction them off with you know signatures by Sharks players on it. So we went to an That's event cool. at the Sharks last night. Better. It was really fun. Who were they playing? Uh, Nashville. Oh, and it was good. a blowout. It was eight to nothing Nashville. It was really <laughs> embarrassing. The Sharks couldn't pass for shit. So we left. We were like, okay, this is... And what did you do afterwards? Uh, we walked down to a bar that I'll recommend for y'all later. Uh, it is a really strange place. It was it used to be a blues bar called the... Uh, it was like a, a New Orleans-style restaurant called the Poorhouse Bistro. And... They had to move the restaurant. But over the years at the bistro, they built this patio with a stage outside. And last night we discovered that the patio and the stage are still operating as a bar, even though the house has moved. So like we saw it, we were walking past like, that place is still open. We went in and had some drinks in there. It was fucking great. There was a band playing. It's like way cooler now than it used to be um, because it's so freaking strange now. It's just a patio. Did you close it down? No, we just had. I, I I just, the only reason I'm asking what you did last night is I noticed we both had the booze shakes at lunch. <laughs> <laughs> well, got home and then I got my own supply. 
Uh, that's yeah. I was really happy on some level that original Joe's was closed because I knew. I mean, so many of the shows that I've tanked here were yeah. because we started <laughs> whiskey sours. Yeah. At what mean, so many Joe's. shows. Well, I'll take credit for one of those. Or, but well, uh, I've I've been to original Joe's without you. Oh, I hate to you break said we. You. I assumed you meant you and I. Well, whoever <laughs> yeah. was around. Fair enough. Me, Fair enough. Or just me. Yeah. Uh, uh, so. Yeah, but I did have a margarita with you just because I was fucking. I, but I saw you eating tacos, and I'm like, I'm glad I got something I could eat with a fork. This <laughs> beer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you are you a regular boozer? No. As a matter of fact, if I was shaking, that was probably not from the booze. Probably just whatever. I don't know. Man. Nervous condition. Wow, that's cool. But I didn't know I had till you've observed it. So maybe you've just diagnosed me, Doug. I need to go to the doctor. Is it, is it, is it, are you going to tell Trish that you smoked a cigarette, or is she going to find out here? Uh, she just found out right now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Trish. No. You told me there's nothing we can't talk about. No, you're right. Was that just out of nerves, or were, are you a former smoker? I'm a former smoker, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm still an occasional smoker. Can't believe your kid didn't show up for this. I know. He knows this. This is not a surprise to anybody. This is not like some earth-shaking news. <laughs> It would have been so much more fun to work with you if I'm he was sorry. here, but probably not I know. about his mom. Yeah, yeah, it would have been interesting. He's a, you know, both my kids are very sensitive. They're both sweet fucking kids, and you know they've been through hard, hard adolescence, and they're both coming out on the other side as really, really cool young adults. But they, they both still have had a hard time, and they, you know, they bear the scars of it. But, uh, is there part of you that glad they're gone? <laughs> My kids, <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, was there? Did you, did you go through like uh, any kind of uh, postpartum well, so depression when they had to move on? In if the life? Trisha hadn't shown up with two kids of her own, oh, oh, that's what I was going to ask you. If then, she had kids. then oh. maybe we'd be having a different conversation. Oh, oh no, how old are they? Uh, I was so happy for you till now. Twelve and thirteen. So oh, uh, it's like going back to the top yeah. of the slide on on <laughs> teenage years. So yeah. I, I don't, but because Trisha's got, uh, these kids are with uh, an ex who has the kids 50% of the time. So f we've got a really great situation right now where 50% of our lives are as empty nesters. And then 50%, we've got these great kids to hang out. So it's actually a pretty nice, nice balance. You like kids. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you get to yell at them and stuff? Uh, you know, that's a great question. You've been together for how long? Uh, you know, I should know that all right off the top. Two and a half years back. Right. Yeah. So, uh, the kids, I haven't had to or wanted to yell at them yet. So I, I don't suppose there'd be any reason for me to how hold did, back should I need to. But how did they, uh, hasn't come uh, how did they cotton to your arrival? I think they like me. I think they like me. They, they seem to. All right. And, you know, they don't, they're, they're still not quite teenagers. So as they get to be teenagers, the truth will out. Uh -huh. Like they're going to be, you know, food eater motherfucker pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> food eater motherfucker. Uh, it, it, what about the ex? Is that civil? Yeah, that's it. Oh, good. Yeah. She's uh, friends with uh, my bandmate's uh, wife. So she's part of the kind of extended scene. So right. It's a good thing we're all, all copacetic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we know too many people in that kind of... Uh, like Erickson was stuck in Peoria forever waiting for his fucking last kid to turn 18. And he... He talked about it for years and years. As soon as uh, the last one's 18, I'm out of here. And I think it, it was probably happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Get in the van. <laughs> loaded. My son lives in Oakland still, so he and I see each other you know, every other week pretty much. And uh, my daughter lives up in Olympia, Washington. We just saw her a couple weeks ago. I don't see her as much as I'd like to. Yeah, Olympia's not a good, uh, not a good town for depression. No, it's a great town for depression. Right. <laughs> yeah. You got a lot of company, so she's uh, she's up there suffering with with uh, all the other students at Evergreen State College. Yeah, I don't know why she contacted me, but I just give her my new number if she ever needs anything. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, we have we have a crisis line. Yeah, Doug is like a support system for our entire family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I feel connected to your family. Yeah, we feel connected to you. I mean, it's it's a it's a funny thing. It's a strange I, relationship. I, I, in a way. I think I met the daughter, didn't I? I don't think you've met either of my kids. I know my son's really excited to meet you tomorrow. All right. 
Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I, for some reason, I thought I met the daughter, but uh, maybe not. Actually, uh, Doug's not doing a meet and greet tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. Well, you know. It's not clear. We'll today. buy the VIP package uh, next time I, it's over. Uh, uh, Paul, I have you on the list, but there's no plus. For <laughs> if you can just sit in the parking lot and, and don't smoke by the doorway, because that old man gets really fucking angry. You, you know what? The funny thing about you getting shit for smoking out back of that place is that me and Andy were smoking out front. <laughs> and then my partner, John, my band partner, Andy smoked me and uh, John out right before the show. <laughs> Chances are it's probably your weed anyway. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, Andy's, it's, 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 it's your not weed. Andy's weed. It wasn't Andy's weed. Yeah. yeah. Hurry up. Let's smoke this. Fair thing. enough. Okay. Let's, uh, let's, I'm going to pour one more and say goodbye, Paul. Again, the, the, the website or uh, waxmoonmusic.com. We're on uh, Spotify, Apple Music, all the places you can find digital music. Look for our LP, Wax, uh, Wax Moon. Hello Morning. We've got a couple other EPs out and stuff as well. Vinyl for Hello Morning is now available. Hit us up on Bandcamp. You get all that shit. Uh, do we even have a record player? We do. Yes. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, we're, we're not, it's talk, Good Morning not after music. Find it. Yeah. When you get home <laughs> and you're you're nursing a hangover, put on the Wax Moon record. It'll do you just right. Fantastic. I uh, I am glad you came on, and uh, uh, it's good catching up, and hopefully. Uh, Tomorrow night, I have new shit because he was at my show in fucking San Francisco, and hopefully some of it's different. <laughs> All you. right. Thank you. Take us out, bingo. Okay. Bye-bye now. Cheers. Cheers, buddy.